Now if you'd like to see a specific numerical example, there's one in your book and there's another one in my lecture notes, so please feel free to refer to those. Let's talk in general about different types of transmission line problems and how you would set them up and solve them. So let's take the simplest one, which is what we've been discussing. Let's suppose that you know VG and RG because you chose the generator and that you know ZL because you built it and you know the characteristic impedance of the line and its length. And let's suppose that you want to find two voltages. You want to find the voltage at the load and you want to find the voltage at the input. These two things are things you could read with an oscilloscope. Would you say that VN and VL are equal? No, definitely not, because the length of the transmission line changes the phase between the incident and the reflected waves and makes it so that VN is not equal to VL. But let's find them. We're going to always go back to just our standard voltage equation, V0 plus e to the minus j beta z plus gamma V0 plus e to the plus j beta z. Right here is z equals zero and right there is z equals minus L. So for VL we're just going to substitute in here um, zero for our z. So it's V0 plus e to the minus j beta zero which is one plus gamma times V0 plus e to the plus j beta zero which again is one. So this is going to be V0 plus times one plus the complex reflection coefficient. Now that's great except we don't know V0 yet. Uh, we'll find the reflection coefficient as ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0. Now let's go find VN. VN is going to be V0 plus e to the minus J beta minus L, turns this into positive, plus gamma V0 plus e to the J beta minus L. So this also is very good except that we don't yet know V0, so we needed to, in order to be able to get that, we had to solve another way for VN, which was using the voltage divider. It is VG times ZN over ZN plus RG. We know ZN, or rather we can calculate it um, just using the parameters of the transmission line. We know RG, we know VG, so that's going to allow us to solve first for V0 plus, where V0 plus was VG ZN over ZN plus RG divided by e to the J beta L plus gamma e to the minus j beta l. That allows us to solve for v0 plus. As soon as we have v0 plus, we can plug it back in here to be able to find vl, and we can plug it in here to be able to find vn. So in this way, we've been able to solve for the two voltages in this circuit. Now let's suppose that we wanted to find a current. So here's our circuit again. Let's say that I would like to find I in. Once I found V in, that is easy. I in is equal to V in, which I found on the previous page, divided by Z in, which we'd already calculated. The same thing is going to happen for I load. I load is going to be V load, which we calculated on the previous page, divided by Z load, which we assume we know. So it's very easy to find the currents by just taking the impedance and the voltage, inputting them to the, to the ratio and getting the current.